Have there been any clinical trials to see if vitamin D supplementation makes a difference to autoimmune disease? There have been quite a lot of vitamin D supplementation trials in the last few years. And that's really be, been because I think the research community has demanded this. They said, well, there are thousands of association studies linking low vitamin D levels with increased risk of a variety of, of health issues, common cancers, autoimmune disease, and so on. But it's not causality. So prove this by doing a randomized control trial. Um, and supplementing people with vitamin D, they should therefore be at less risk of developing these diseases. Now, of course, in the context of autoimmune disease and in things like common cancers, this is difficult to do. You have to get lots of people who are taking vitamin D supplements for long periods of time. And many of these trials have failed because it's been difficult to do that. They're very expensive. And um, also, many of them have been carried out in North America because these are places that are more readily have access to funds to do this sort of work. And as a result, what we found is a lot of the trials have simply, as we've mentioned earlier on, have, have taken people who are already vitamin D replete and given them a little bit more vitamin D, and it hasn't achieved much. It's essentially, many of the trials have been um, null studies. They haven't really shown any specific effect of vitamin D, sometimes in subgroups. For example, if you look at um, people who are, if they divide the subgroup into uh, people who are vitamin D deficient at the start versus those who are sufficient, it's, you may see an effect of vitamin D in the vitamin D deficient people who are in that study. So have there been any positive results? But one interesting study that's come out recently, I think that has have shown that there, it is, there is some potential for vitamin D in protecting against autoimmune disease has been the VITAL trial, which was started by John Manson and, and of various colleagues, principally in the sort of Boston area. And this was a, a big supplementation study that involved, uh, I think it was like 25, 20, nearly 26,000 individuals, and they were supplemented with vitamin D. And, here, and interestingly, quite a, a reasonable amount of vitamin D. They're using 2,000 international units per day, so daily dosing of people over a five-year period. So it was, um, it was a, a level of supplementation that was going to see some change in the individual's vitamin D levels. Um, but of course, it was slightly difficult. The placebo arm in this study, they couldn't completely stop people from taking vitamin D. And of course, if you go to the beach for a few days, you're going to make a lot of vitamin D. So they couldn't stop people and have a placebo arm that was entirely vitamin D free. So they allowed people to take multivitamins and um, so on that would give them some basal level of vitamin D. But the treatment arm received 2000 international units per day, which is much more than you would have in most um, multivitamin uh, prescriptions. So this study was interesting in that it initially reported effects on um, cardiovascular disease and common cancers, and it had no effect. So that was a, a very negative study where it didn't appear that there was any real effect. But what was interesting was that the baseline levels for these um, subjects in the study were about 70 nanomolar. So they were really very healthy in terms of their vitamin D levels. And they did go high. They went up to about 100 on the supplementation arm. So it, it did change. But really, these were people who were already vitamin D healthy. But what was interesting is that uh, just this year, there was um, a report of the follow-up study they did here where they looked at um, the incidence of autoimmune disease in people during that five-year period. And over the first three years, there was no real difference between the vitamin D arm and the placebo arm in terms of effects on prevention of autoimmune disease. But once you went beyond the three years, you did see a very strongly significant effect. There's actually something like a 22% decrease in the, in the reports of autoimmune disease in these, these individuals. Now, there has to be said that this trial was a trial targeted at slightly older age groups. So they're in their 50s. So people who are possibly at risk of certain types of autoimmune disease, arthritis, for example, thyroid autoimmunity. But of course, it doesn't really include people who are at risk of, say, multiple sclerosis or type 1 diabetes. That tends to affect younger age groups. But nevertheless, this was a very strongly positive effect showing that vitamin D can help 
to potentially prevent the onset of autoimmune disease in a more elderly population. So the message was really, if you can increase your vitamin D level when you get a bit older, then you have the potential to protect against some forms of autoimmune disease. Mm, that's a really interesting and important finding. Can you say a little bit more about where this might lead? It may be interesting then seeing further follow-up studies whether that same group of individuals, uh, where they, they look at other diseases, whether um, there'll still be the same sort of positive effect. And it's, it's interesting to note that when they broke down the autoimmune diseases into the different types, thyroid, autoimmunity, it, it was primarily arthritis that vitamin D was, rheumatoid arthritis that vitamin D in the study protected against. So it has the most positive effect on that particular form, form of autoimmunity. And that's sort of interesting because there's been quite a lot of int interest in whether vitamin D is a potential treatment for autoimmunity. Now that's the other issue that we haven't discussed today, of course, is that a lot of the vitamin D work that my group's been interested in and other groups has been in how vitamin D could protect against the onset of autoimmune disease. But another question might be, well, can it actually also is it a potential treatment? Can it lower inflammation in people who already have um, autoimmunity? Um, and there again, a very mixed set of data. Some people suggesting that you know, vitamin D supplementation has some benefits and other studies shown that it has no benefits. But I think then becomes a lot more difficult to sort of manage how vitamin D might work in these sort of settings, because we know that once autoimmune disease sets in, the immune system almost tries to circumvent the effects of vitamin D. We know, for example, that memory immune cells that are produced in autoimmunity in your synovial joints, for example, are less sensitive to vitamin D than cells that T cells, immune cells that flow around in your general circulation. So the idea is that when the disease, autoimmune disease sets in, it almost makes it harder for agents like vitamin D to work. So you need higher levels of vitamin D to achieve an effect once the disease has become established. So that's another problem that we have to face is if somebody already has autoimmune disease, do we have to increase vitamin D levels still further in order to get a positive effect? Thank you.